All right, welcome back. Mac 2320, moving on. Chapter 9, talking about forward and reverse control of a motor. So I want you to think about station 2 on the 870 trainer, all right, where we can manually make it go forward and backwards, the tray, all right, so that it's detecting the height of the valve body and if the port's there or, or not, all right. Um, it can be done in auto or in manual uh, with that. So we're going to talk about, you know, reversing circuits, why we got to be cautious, those sort of things, uh, how to reverse a three-phase motor, uh, and most importantly, talking about interlocking uh, so that it can't go forward and reverse at the same time. All right, so if we want to talk about reversing a three-phase motor, we can reverse a three-phase motor by changing any of the motor leads, uh, one for the other. I'll show you on a schematic on the next page. Okay, a separate contactor is needed for each direction. All right, but idealistically, true reversing controllers, we use two separate contactors and one overload relay. So we have one for forward and one for reverse. Okay, so we would have two separate contactors there. And you're going to do that on one of the labs uh, where you'll have uh, forward and reverse on your motor. All right, but we'll go through this. So this is three phase. Okay, so as long as any one of these three T's. All right, all right, one of our terminators on our motor here. So uh, as long as we swap any one of those three. So I could swap T1 and T3, T1 and T2, and I could swap T2 and T3, and it'll reverse the direction of the motor. How does that work, right? Well, what's the point of when we talked about in uh, the electrical course, right? You put your thumb in the direction of the current flow, and you wrap your fingers in the direction of the uh, magnetic field. Well, when you change, you know, what current's coming in at a different phase, it's going to swap the way the current comes in and change the magnetic field there. So that's how that's going to work for those, okay? So how do we set that up if we use magnetic reversing starters for three-phase? We would set up this way, two separate sets of contactors, okay? Forward contactors and reverse contactors, all right? And you'll see that when we kind of do the lab. But they connect in the same way, but when reverse uh, you know, closes, the motor is going to rotate a specific direction. And when forward uh, engages, it's going to operate in a certain direction. Okay? Notice that leads are actually swapped here, how they're wired. Okay? So if we notice the, how we're line 1, 2, and 3 are going in for forward, notice how uh, line 3 and line 1 are swapped for forward and reverse. Okay? So just it's using uh, what we did on the previous slide here, okay? It's swapping one, or sorry, not exactly this one. This is swapping line two and line three. This one's swapping line one and line three, all right, to the reverse and forward contactors. So you still have to wire it up with the line swapping as well because technically there's not a special contactor that's called forward, a special contactor that's called reverse you have to wire them up. So the first three are going to be forward contactors and you wire them up as such. And then the next three we have to swap one of the leads when we are wire up the contactors so that the motor actually reverses. Okay. Next concept here, interlocking. Very, very important because you don't want a motor to try and go forward and backwards at the same time. So if you walk over to station two on the 870 trainer and you try and hit manual forward and reverse at the same time, They'll both kind of go down halfway, but they will never, ever engage, so the motor actually won't go anywhere. I mean, think about your car. Uh, you cannot make your car go forward and reverse at the same time. You don't want to do that. You'll ruin a lot of things. All right, so very important that we understand what interlocking is, okay? And there's a couple different kinds. We can do it with contacts, and we can do it with mechanical interlocking, where we actually put a physical lever there that prevents the contactor from closing a well one is energized. So if I'm holding down forward and I hit reverse, all right, there's a mechanical interlock that will not physically allow reverse to go down, okay? So very, very important here. And here's what it looks like, all right? So this dashed red line that's sitting on here, uh, that's the mechanical interlock. So if forward is repressed, is pressed, okay, reverse cannot be, and vice versa. If I try to hit reverse, and I'm in reverse right now, I cannot hit forward as I'm doing this, okay? We can also do electrical interlocking. So that was mechanical interlocking. This is now talking about electrical interlocking. So we can have double acting push buttons, okay? That's one method, or auxiliary contacts. So we're gonna take a look at the schematics here for both of those. 
Okay, so this is double acting push buttons. Notice that there's two push buttons here uh, in series, one for forward and reverse. So notice when you push the forward, what happens to uh, the reverse? The reverse disengages, okay? Then if I hit reverse, it disengages the forward one. So that's how our double acting uh, push buttons work in this case. So you can see there uh, where that is. So if you look at this schematic, it has double acting push buttons and it has the mechanical interlocking, all right? So a redundancy built in. So that uh, if we're trying to do something manually, we cannot do it or electrically doing it, okay? So nothing will work there uh, the way this is set up, okay? Then if we do electrical interlocking, okay? So notice we're not using double acting push buttons now. We're using contactors, okay? So we still have the mechanical interlock. You can still see that one between forward and reverse, but now we have what? Uh, electrical interlockers. So we have normally closed contactors. Notice that the reverse goes with the forward line and the forward goes the re with the reverse line. So what happens here, they're both normally closed because the second I hit forward, okay, if I hit the push button to go forward, if we look at the bottom of the schematic, what happens? That's a normally closed contact. So when I actually press forward, that contact opens up not allowing reverse to energize. Okay, and then conversely, if I push the reverse button, okay, the normally closed reverse contactor opens and energy will not be allowed to flow through the forward uh, coil. So that's how we're going to do this so that it cannot go up and down at the same time. Um, you guys, you know, important when we did PLC class, we had to do that uh, to our garage door as well, right? You don't want your garage door to be able to go up and down at the same time. It's stressful on the motor. Okay, not a good practice either. So if we want to, you know, this is how we're normally going to be looking here. And uh, what's highlighted in red is if the motor is operating in the forward direction. Okay, so this is if we were monitoring like a PLC program or something. I know it's not ladder logic, but it's a schematic. But if we look at it, okay, this is if it's operating. We've already hit, pressed the forward button. We already have the seal in logic. So the seal in logic between the push button and forward are closed, all right? The reverse is normally closed, and then the forward contactor on the bottom part of the schematic, notice how it's open, not allowing reverse to work. Okay, so this is if we had the motor, this is how it's operating. What's in red is live. Okay, same thing here. Motor's working in the reverse. We've hit the reverse button, energize the circuit, so the reverse contactor that's normally open closes for our seal and logic. And then if we go through the first line, right, the normally closed reverse contactor opens, all right, so the forward cannot be engaged. And we can see what's in red so we can trace what's going on with power. Okay. Now, what's going to be very, very, very important for you guys is the next couple of problems because your entire quiz, too, will be you drawing the wiring diagrams. So I will give you these parts and pieces that you see here on your test. I will hand it out to you. And there's going to be specific ones, so you need to study every single one of these in Chapter 9. Okay, so this is going to be one of it, is developing a wiring diagram so that you can use what? Interlocking, so that we don't go forward and backwards. Now, look at the picture I gave you. What did I give you? I gave you double-acting push buttons. So you got to be very, very smart about how you draw this up, okay? When I give you this, you can't just draw any old forward and reverse. You have to draw it based on what I've given you. All right, so you would take all these components, and you would draw them as such, okay? So we have our forward and our reverse, okay? And I've given you everything, forward, reverse, the motors, the contactors, double-acting push buttons, uh, and such, okay? So I expect to be able to give you that, and in return, you should be able to draw me, okay? This is what? Using push buttons. And it's also using electrical interlocks. Notice what's missing on here? There's no mechanical interlock, so don't draw mechanical interlock. I've only given you forward and reversing contactors that are normally closed. And how do you know that I've given those to you? Take a look at what's in the boxes here for forward and reverse. Notice the contactors. There's two that are sitting in there that are normally closed contactors. That's where you're going to use those, okay? 
The overload relay is normally closed. That's the contactor here that's closest to the motor on the schematic diagram here. It's sitting right next to the three thermocouples. So that's the overload relay contactor. Okay, so that's how all of these uh, apply here when you do them. Okay, so this is literally you drawing the control part of the schematic, not the power part. The power part's up at the top. But if you line up wires, it will make sense for you. Okay, and then I might give you something like this. Okay, we have the wires are numbered. So I might have you keep things in place. All right, what's the difference between the two? So let's go back and look at the, here's the first one I gave you, right? I just gave you, you know, the actual parts and I want you to draw me the reversing, uh, the, the control. Okay, here everything's numbered. So this one, you should be happy if I give you something like this. You literally just have to connect okay the numbers to the numbers so everything kind of makes sense all right that'll make it really easy for you so notice how we go from this diagram whoops sorry i don't have it up here but um, i will have you draw the same thing out and draw the numbers so if we step back and look at this one okay i went the wrong direction on the slide before sorry about that so if we take a look i'm going to give you this and you will draw it to me this way notice what's the difference between the two nothing it's the same circuit this one is showing the wire numbers and the terminal numbers actually sorry the terminal numbers so this is very important when you actually wire up like we've been doing in labs okay so you can draw it I will give it to you this way and expect you to draw it or sorry I keep going the wrong direction I'm sorry uh, I'm gonna give it to you this way and expect you to draw it or I'm gonna give it to you this way expect you to draw this one's a lot easier right we just have to connect the numbers all across the board and this is very very important that you write this out and understand how those numbers because those are terminals and that's where the wires uh, connect to make the final connection all right and I'll explain that to you more as we take the test but this one's a physical on paper uh, test that you need to take all right so uh, I expect you to build it all it'll only be four problems each problem's worth 25 points so uh, you should be good to go. This will be, uh, you know, for one of your major quizzes, okay? There's still more schematics than just this one, so we're going to get through it uh, in multiple lectures. But as usual, guys, uh, contact me if you need anything else. Have a great day. See you in class.